Hi everybody, Byron Martin here at Logies, and one of the group of fruiting plants that we grow are citrus, and within that group are many, many varieties. And most of them are really great house plants or container plants, but there are a few that sort of are out on the edge in terms of their structure and their fruit quality and also their habit, and that is the Australian limes of which Citrus australassica is the most famous, and that's the finger lime. And as you can see here, we have some plants that are coming into fruit. They have these long, sort of tapered um, fruit that have um, juice vesicles inside. This one here is called Red Champagne, which is a new hybrid that we've gotten in, and this is uh, Citrus australassica sanguinea, so this is the red finger lime. And if we cut them open, you can see actually the interior of this um, is the interior is filled with these beads, which can be used as a garnish on salads or in cooking. They are quite sour, like a regular lemon would be, and um, if you break them apart, you can see they all peel right off, and often called lime caviar. In our collection, we have three or four varieties of these. Um, this is the red one, the interior of this, see, the interior of this actually has red beads. And then this one is called Pink Pearl, and the interior of this one actually has pink tones to it. We can cut this open. You can see there's a pink color to it. And the standard finger lime, which is the most common one in cultivation, has green to yellow fruit, and if you cut that open, you can see that the beads are simply green right now. This is actually a little on the unripe side. that will actually turn quite yellow inside. And then lastly, we have other finger limes that um, are actually in another genus. This is Indora, which is the Russell River lime. But it does have a different structure to it. You can see the plant behind me here. The leaves are much bigger, and it's an upright plant. The fruit is actually um, very similar to our regular finger limes, as you can see, that one's a, got an interior yellow center to it. And again, it has those juice vesicles that you see, um, which is common of all our Australian limes. Their culture is very easy, and the reason being they're desert plants where they tolerate tremendous amounts of dryness. Now, most citrus can take it really dry. These can take it also dry and even drier although we don't usually like to put them under that kind of stress, but they're known for their tolerance to drought. They also have a resistance in their root system for root rot. So we, I can't ever remember having disease problems in any of the Australassicas we grow. And we really don't find a lot of insect problems. I mean, many citrus can get spider mites, mealybug, and scale, but we, to my knowledge, at least in our culture here, we've never had any trouble with them. They're also not terribly large growing plants, even in their wild habitat, so they're somewhat contained. Although, if you look at the habit on them, it's kind of stalky, it's kind of going all over the place, and that is actually a normal part of their um, form to them. So, if you want to, you can trim them back, simply head back these outreaching branches here. Generally, that's done in late winter, just before they start to send out new growth. Their flowering cycle um, can be over a long period during the late winter in through even into the summertime. And then, of course, fruit follows after that. Actually, the color on most of these will intensify as they ripen, obviously, but also with the amount of sun they get. So the color on the fruit um, can get really, really deep in color if it's grown under higher light. And also, they're really quite good if you like things sour. And they're a lot of fun, actually, when you're cooking with them or just tasting them or showing them to people that can't believe such things happen in nature. Well, thank you for watching. Here's a little bit of information on growing are citrus from Australia, the citrus australassicas. They're really great plants for pots. And for anyone that wants to get into growing citrus, this is a plant that really does well and is deserving in any collection. If you'd like more information, visit us at logies.com.